love you so much, Uncle Despoir, because I see you in everything. Your energy is everywhere. Even in the unholiest of places, Hashem's energy is there, because without His energy, that place would die. You understand? So why is Hashem giving His energy to the unholy? Because He's feeding the pig. I remember this kid one time asked his father, Daddy, Daddy, because he sees a lot of old people that are wicked. Why do the wicked live so long? So his father looked him dead in the eye. You know what he told him? To punish the righteous when they go off the dead. That's why. <laughs> the kid was like in shock. Like, yo, it made him understand. You better be righteous, yo. Let me tell you something about this world. You know when it says when you give good, you get good? That is so true because it's a spiritual thing. You see what I'm saying? You don't understand. You give charity... It's not just you gave the guy five bucks, yo. There's an emotional aspect to it. You made him feel good. You brought him back to life. You blessed him. You gave him kind words. You encouraged him. And it says when a person gives stakash, Hashem is standing right to the right of the poor person. Like he's right there watching, yo. What do you think? I had a few situations in my life just recently, yo, where I had to deal with wicked people and it's not fun. And I gave on uh, my last probably three, four videos talks about how to deal with the wicked, bro. The wicked, they're so wicked, bro. They're attached to every misery loves company. That's wicked. That's wicked, bro. Just they want to see everybody sad like them because they have no peace in their heart. You know why? Because God's not there. They took God. They evicted God from their heart. Now the Satan sits there. Now they're miserable because the Satan all day is eating their heart out, yo. So they're so miserable that instead of being nice to people and getting good energy to help that Satan be removed and get Hashem back, no, they're going to be even more wicked. The jealousy, the hate, oh my goodness, yo, people are like, yo. <laughs> my mother's so cute, she's like, there's so many good people in the world. And I said, yeah, but you have to be honest, there's also a lot of bad, yo. It's more bad than good because even the good ones you see, that yeah, they can act all nice, but when it comes to their ego, they can be the rudest. But how many people I can show you right now in this world that you would say he's a nice guy? And I show you behind the scenes. I dealt with a few. One, I, yo, one that yo, the nicest guy looks like a really cool guy. Not even close, bro. The people close to him obviously know who he is. You know what I mean? But to the public, he may look a lot nicer than he is, yo. But correct him. And then he'll get mad. And then you're going to understand who he is. A shy, you understand? That's what it says. When the wicked get corrected, they get mad. When the righteous get corrected, they like it, yo. They welcome that wisdom. You know why? Because he's smart. You know why? Because he wants himself to be better in life. That's why the wicked person, his intellect gets clouded by a wicked, evil, demonic spirit that hopped into his brain and is not leaving until we exercise it out, yo. What do you think is happening in this world, man? Like the waves on an ocean, you know what I mean? It just keeps coming. The drama, the disrespect, the rudeness. The go look in the universe right now. If you had to see how many places right now there's injustice going on, the whole map will light up red. What do you know? Every place you'll see red. A little red dot flashing to let you know over there, they trample the courts over there, yo. <laughs> That's what Hashem told them in the book of Isaiah. Don't come to me with these garbage offerings. I didn't say garbage, with these incest offerings. I remember one of my videos, I said this incest offerings. You know, like I tried to make... Then I said to myself, nah, nah, nah. When Hashem says it, He knows what He's saying. He says incense, we're going to say incense. Enough with your detestable incense offerings, your evil assemblies and your gatherings for my Shabbat and my convocations. I'm not interested in this nonsense. I told my mother today, tell me if you think this is deep. Let's, let's think together. I said to my mom, I said, Mommy, imagine right now you were standing in front of God to get into heaven. And they put all your midot and your sins and your good deeds on a scale and it was even. So they said to you, look, and it's not true because my mom is mad nice. But I told her, just imagine in this situation, we won't use my mom, yo. We'll say somebody else was, because my mom is very righteous, yo. So that wouldn't be a good scenario with her. But I asked her, I said, imagine if you were standing in front of God and God said to you, I have to answer this question to get into heaven. If not, you go to get her home for a year and then you enter, no problem. So she goes, what's the question? I said, did God ever call a human being a piece of trash? You know, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Would he ever do that? Would God Has God ever done that? Absolutely not. 
I told her wrong answer. She said, prove it. I said, no problem. Isabel. Jezebel. You know who's Jezebel? She wanted to king. She wanted to kill the prophet Elijah. What's her name? Jezebel. In Hebrew, Isabel. Break it into two words. He, Zebel. She's trash. Who names people? HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What did he name her? She's trash. She's Zebel. That's her name, yo. And I'm going to tell you something about Izevel right now. I mean, I don't know. God only knows. Only God makes these calculations. But who knows? She might actually be in heaven. Who knows? I don't know. I can't say because she was so wicked, bro. Like the paradigm of wicked. But then look at her end, yo. Eaten by dogs, you know, like trampled by horses. Like, yo, yo, her end was so beyond vicious, bro. And Yehi the prophet only buried her, yo. I didn't even bury her. There was like a bury. It was just her hands, her feet, and her, her skull. But the dogs left that, her hands, because she clapped for the wedding processions. The feet, because she walked with the funeral procession. That's why. Need that connected, me die. Tell this guy the other day, oh, God is right. How do you know it? How do I know it? It's called karma, bro. What do you mean? You see what goes around, comes around. Measure for measure. You're going to make fun of a handicapped person. I don't care if you're a comedian, bro. You can go tell the world, oh, comedic license. I'm a comedic license. Comedic license. We are normal in the world of heaven. There is a, I don't get judged in heaven. I said, you're right. You get judged here on earth. And then in the end, you get judged over there. What do you think? Nonsense rebuttals, bro. Senseless rhetoric that just spews like a f- spigot. Like, stop, bro. Stop, man. These people try to make God look bad, bro, and it's gonna be bad for you, bro. Proof to me it's measure for measure. How many times, man? Look at, yo. How many times in the Torah there's measure for measure? It's a lot. Too many to count, yo. So that's why I love the Torah, bro. If you want to have peace in your heart, get stuck to the Torah. Because when you get stuck to the Torah, you get stuck to God. It's a tree of life. Grab it, hold on to it, and cherish it forever. Forgive me for all the sins I made with my eyes and Kaddish Baruch Hu. And a momentary lapse of judgment and intellect blinded by a temptation. Forgive me for all the sins I did with my eyes and cut this bar off. Forgive me for all the sins I did with my eyes and cut this bar off in my past. <laughs> was very into the women. You know what I mean? Not, not good. Not good. But they'll waste your time. They'll cause you drama. They'll, oh my God. Goodness, bro. And that's what I love. I wish I knew this lesson. And now I know it. But when I was young, nobody ever told me this. When a man and a woman sin together, and we all know what that means. All you kids out there right now going to your girlfriend's house in the middle of the night getting busy. What you think? We don't know. We know. We're just too embarrassed to say it. When a man and a woman sin together, they will eventually hate each other. Think about that. Side these twins, a husband and wife want to murder each other every day till they die. And she brings them back one body, two heads. Now go live with each other. That's going to be your atonement. You understand? Sick. Hating destroys the hater. That's the perfect example of the side these twins. Yo, and anyone today who's alive who's a side these twins who may be listening to this, if that's even possible, no disrespect, yo. Just know that you're going right to heaven when you leave this world, whatever that may be. And you already got, you're getting your punishment, you understand? So you good to go. After this world, it's a guarantee. Everybody else, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know, because we haven't been judged yet. Imagine the day of your judgment, yo. Think about that, yo. First of all, I just want to say, you know, myself included, and I have a lot of mercy. I really do. I promise you I do, bro. I see a... Commercial on TV, some handicapped cow cry like a, like the mother up cry even more sometimes. I mean, I shouldn't even say it like that, but like filled with compassion. That's what the Torah taught me. You know what I'm saying, but even I have to be more merciful. Why? Because God commanded, yo. What do you think it says in the Rahot, yo? That I accept every person in the nation of Israel as my brother. Yeah, come on, man. If Hashem is telling you that, and in the same Rahot, He's telling you. May my soul be like silent to all those who curse me. I mean, what is he telling you, bro? He's telling you that when somebody does something real dirty and nasty to you, they'll let it go. And it's hard, bro. 
And there's only one way, there's only one magic potion to let it go. You know what it is? Ask any therapist, they're not going to know. The magic potion is believing and trusting, not believing. Knowing that God is running the show. You want to get close to God? Repeat this and repeat this often. Put your ego low. Let it go. Let it go. You know why? Because God is running the show, bro. That's why you let it go and put your ego low. I'm telling you right now, man, that's the magic potion that if somebody hurts you and you want to retaliate, you want to even to tell them that God is going to destroy them, even if you say it with love, like I told this dude recently, yo, with love I told this dude, yo, my brother, you playing with fire, man. Trust me, I showed you so many more arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned, bro. What is the problem? Come on, man. I try to help the nation of Israel. They don't even want it, bro. They spurned the Holy One of Israel, yo. Not me. God, what do you think? Yo, I'm just one of his mess one of his many messengers, yo. To take away your energy to talk about God Man, I spoke to a few people Told them stories that a normal person would cry, bro They can't even look you in the eye They look down, they're not even interested Some of them will try to question you And you know it's a real rasha When you tell them one of the most beautiful stories in the Torah How do you know? You can prove it? What about this? Like they're looking for poke holes in the story Why, why, why? Because they're haters Why? Misery loves company That's why Stay away from these people, bro. I'm telling you right now, if it's your wife, run away, get a divorce, bro. Trust me, if your wife is a wicked witch, get a divorce, bro. What did King Solomon say? Better to live on the corner of a roof than in the house with a wicked woman, yo. Always looking for quarrels, always looking for fights. Why? Why is she always looking for fights? You know why? Because she's miserable. There's no peace in her heart, yo. You don't understand, man. This is the million dollar gift that if you can get it it's not a million it's a, it's a priceless gift it's peace in your heart get to a point you have peace in your heart bro. you're not gonna get upset bro you know who really had peace in his heart not who Ben Dams he had peace in his heart no matter what happened to him he knew God is why he got Nahum Ben Gamzu honestly bro and he should have wore a shirt that said, put your ego low, let it go, and know that God is running the show. I bet you, Rabbi, I don't know. But Nachum Ben Gamzu for sure is listening to me speak right now because he's alive, there's a spirit, and maybe Hashem is allowing him to listen. I think that Nachum Ben Gamzu would be like, yo, that's official. I don't know how he would say it. I don't know. He would like that a lot, yo. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Gotta put you, gotta fall back like my book says, yo. Let me tell you a little bit about my book right now. So I have a book about, it's gonna make it into a movie called Fall Back. This is about this dude that all he does is tweet about his love for God. So people start getting annoyed with him. You know, nobody's trying to talk about God, bro. Stop talking about God. Every time I love you, this, that, that, come on, give me a break. So one wicked Jewish, they're both Jews. Wicked Jewish atheist, arrogant atheist, the worst kind, bro. Tells him, bro, if I give you five million dollars, would you shut up like that? So he writes back, How rude could you be? They get into it a little bit. Fine, long story short, he says to him, Listen, if you really think God is so real, you keep talking to him like it's so real. I'll give you five million dollars, bro. Go to the top of a 20 story building, I'll pick the building, I have a perfect building, bro. Go to the top of the building, back. You know, like walk on the ledge, fall back. Go right on the ledge like you're about to do a backflip. Just like that. And just fall back. And if God is as real as you say, He'll save you. So this dude, in a moment of anger, said, you know what? Deal. 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 He was like, that's it. God had enough of these wicked Jews. Like that's what he said to himself. Deal. They agreed on it. Long story short. The day came, paparazzi, this, that was like a big deal. The rabbis are gathering to actually do it, should he not do it? You're not allowed to rely on a miracle, but this would be such an amazing miracle. If he really believes that God is going to save him, he's going to be saved. They were going nuts, yo, bringing it to the big dean, this, that. Fine, they couldn't stop him, bro. The day came, it was the most gorgeous day, yo. Everybody, Davin Shachri, he included. And he went to the building. Media's 
there, the news is there. They're like, everybody wants to see, like, yo, this dude is real. Let's see what really happens. They're interested. Peak their interest, fall back. He goes to the top of the building. Now, as he goes up, as he enters the building, and everyone sees that, like, clouds are starting to come, it's starting to get dark. It's already like, yo, you can tell, like, God is involved right now for real. Like, even the atheist was, like, tripping because he's seen it went from sunny. The dark and gloomy It's like a little bit of a drizzle And they see him at the top of the building And they're like bugging out yo. They're like don't jump Don't jump The Rishayim are like jump Jump this day They're going nuts So he goes like he's gonna do a backflip At the edge of the roof bro Literally literally bro And he looks up to Shammai He says to Shema And he says God I'm just doing this For your honor as he's falling back out, it takes like four seconds probably for the 24 to fall and land on the ground. As he's falling back in the middle of his ascension, the strong wind comes, and as he's about to smash against the floor, the wind comes from underneath him. A gust, 200 mile an hour wind, boom, lifts him up and brings him right back to the top of the building. But this time he's not doing a backflip. This time he's looking at the crowd like he's gonna die. So now he's facing the crowd. And he looks up to Shamayim and he thanks Hashem. And that's the book. It's called Fall Back. I just gave you the whole movie, bro. Get out of here, man. I should take that back, but I won't because I love you. <laughs> and I wanted you to hear that so you know that when it's real, it's real. And of course, what do you think happened? There's going to be part two. I'll tell you why. Because right away, the angel, oh, no, you think it was a miracle. That was just nature. God doesn't control that. It was a gust of wind. It could have happened to anybody. That doesn't prove nothing. You know, they're like, oh, nonsense. But the real Jews out there that were atheists, that knew this is too much. This is too much of a coincidence, bro. What do you think? That's not a real statement. Too much of a coincidence is real. When it's too much, you see right away, yo, that's it. God is involved. Deal with it, bro. We don't want to talk about God. You don't want to talk about God, you're a Shiva. <laughs> I had one year, yeah, but, yes, it was a reform. I'm not going to say no, man. I'm not going to diss my nation that bad, bro. I mean, come on, man. It's not even dissing them, bro, because I love them. They're my nation. But in my life, if I do something wrong, I put it on the table, bro. I'm going to let you know this is wrong and I need to work on it, yo. One thing I got to work on is keeping my mouth closed, especially when I'm upset. Thank God I don't curse. I'm like yelling and speaking like a psycho. Yo, I say what I want to say with love. My former God is going to deal with you. It's measure for measure. And I start talking like what God is going to do to these people. And I give them proof from the Torah. And everything I'm doing is 100% legit. There's not even a problem with it, bro. I say it with love and everything. But yo, again, you know why you don't do that? I'll tell you why. You do that to a righteous person. And he'll hug you and thank you and get out of his sin. But don't do that to a wicked person. Don't do that to a wicked person because now it's going to create even more dissension, more hate, more ah, more evil and wicked, chaotic things that are going to be attached to the situation. Why? Because there's hate involved. You understand? Got to just keep your mouth closed. That's why silence is golden. No, it's not. If I was silent right now, you wouldn't have heard this whole lecture. I, just, I don't even like the word lecture. It's so talk. I just gave, you know what I mean? Because it's a talk, bro. I don't do this like a lecture. I'm not lecturing you. Talking to you with love, and I'm letting you know that when you're stuck to God and you do good things, it's by default. Hashem has to help you. Not even I would say, like, you he didn't want to help you, but he'd still have to help you. He's gonna help you. Why? Because it's justice. The wicked, you think Hashem likes rewarding the wicked? He doesn't. It just gives them more energy to keep being wicked. But he has to do what's fair. That's, it. That's how it goes. That's what makes him a God. That when his son stands in front of him, there's no bribe. Not even with his own son would he be bribed. Do you understand? The Most High. Everybody needs to really look up to the sky right now and just thank God for allowing us to breathe. Just like that. I'm not even joking. Before you even thank him for the car and for the wife and for the kids and for the job and for the money and for the blessings. Blessing for life, yo. Just for life. Giving me the ability to come back to this world to fix what I need to fix. Thank God, I just remember right now. I wanted to change my voice unless it was just super dope and deep, but we'll make another one right now. And just so you know, so I can get into a good spirit about it, yo. 
<laughs> it's all about God. I love you, God. Thank you for giving me a chance to fix what I need to fix. Uh, be appreciative. Don't ever forget that God is running the show. Like that. Just like that. And I love you. Like a really nice speech. Yo, people call my mother. Change the message. Change the message. They're like going crazy. They're like, yo, what if that was... I hire people. I hire people. And if I called your phone, I wouldn't hire you. I said, that's your problem. Yeah, normally, yo. Crazy, yo. They get mad. Mad. Why? Because I have God on my phone, bro. Like, come on, man. One lady told me you're fake. I said, I'm fake. God forbid you talk like that. She said, you're fake. I know a lot of big rabbis in Toronto. They don't have voice messages like that. I said, good. So ask them why. When you coming to me with this question? You're confused? Go ask them why they don't have the message. I'm just letting you know this is my message. And I'm proud of it. And it's not a problem. You're going to lose a job. So let me lose a million jobs. God forbid. Look at how the wicked. Because I see, I talk to you about the wicked. I'm talking about I lose a million jobs. God forbid. But why I already threw it out my mouth. And it's in the universe. Only if they made me go against God, you understand? If God ain't with it, I ain't with it. <laughs> That's what I should call this talk. I like that. If God ain't with it, I ain't with it, yo. That's it, man. I wouldn't want a job, yo, where the boss is anti-God, wicked, evil. I run away from these places, yo. You know what I mean? That's really the lesson, man. It's crazy. The last five, six talks. All I talk about is wicked people Because that's all I'm dealing with right now Yo, three of them <laughs> Yo, and they don't even know each other But they all sit in the room <laughs> And agree They're not wrong To this, that, get out of here Yo, you're all arrogant You all got checked And you all couldn't handle it That's what happened, yo, and that's my badge, yo So that's really the lesson man. If you listen to the last five talks I gave Here's the Bottom line lesson with love from Hashem to me to you. Don't ever kiss up to the wicked because you'll fall in their hands. And don't ever, I repeat, don't ever rebuke. Not even give advice. Forget rebuke. I didn't even rebuke. I said with love. Listen, I'm letting you know. With love. Yo, none of that, yo. Don't say nothing to these people. You know why? Because if you correct them, they hate you. That's the lesson I learned, bro. When you correct them, they hate you. They're so fake. When they need you, oh my God, bro. You can see. Come like the sweetest of honey, like the spring honey, the meadow honey. <laughs> don't fall into that trap, yo. People don't change, you know what I mean? Very rare. And you know when they change? When they look in the mirror and they're sick. So if you see that he's bullying somebody and he walks around in life smiling... <laughs> then you know he's wicked to the core, yo. He has no compassion. He has no mercy. So what do you think God is going to have mercy on him? So why does he make a million dollars? Because God is feeding the pig, homie. But you don't know. It was a farm. He had a hundred, a farm, he had a hundred animals and a pig. He fed all the animals and fed the pig double every day for two years. And they saw the pig getting fatter and fatter. They got more jealous and more jealous. But unbeknownst to them, why was he feeding him double? kill them, to slaughter them, to roast them, to barbecue them, to eat them, and then the animals got the point, God was feeding the pig, the farmer was feeding the pig to eat them, God feeds the wicked to kill them, you understand, they, <laughs> excuse me for getting excited about the word of God, but I shouldn't have to apologize for that, real talk, yo, he's in me deep, yo, he's in me deep, he's in my heart right now, that's one billion percent for sure, yo. Super duper peace. Super duper love. And I don't even have dough, bro. Not married. Don't care. I mean, it's not your business, yo. But I'll let you know. <laughs> and I still have the most peace in my heart, yo. The most peace of God. And I wish I could be with my mom right now, yo. But I can't. But your love so God is going to make that happen. And maybe she doesn't listen to my talks, yo. But... I just wanted to let you know, my man, I love you so much. I'm so proud to say with you, my mom, you know, you taught me such beautiful lessons in life, man. You taught me that when I was a little kid, somebody owed me 20 bucks. My mother said, for 20 bucks, you just got this kid out of your life. Yo, you should be thankful for that. If God came to you and said, give me 20 bucks, this guy will never talk to you again. You wouldn't give me, you give him 120 bucks. What? <laughs> Wisdom. 
deeper than deep, yo. Seriously, it's wisdom that only comes from the spirit. And the mind of God, yo. It taught me great lessons. I seen her, how she handled her. I seen somebody one time disrespect her in her face like she was trash, bro. And she just looked at the person and said, You just did me a favor. <laughs> Yo, my mom is no joke, bro. Think about that. Somebody just spit next to you and said, You're a piece of trash. Don't ever talk to me again. You look that person in the eye and say, You know what? I appreciate that, bro. You just did me a favor, yo. And we all know what that means. You just exposed yourself for life. And I appreciate you showing me that side of you because now I know never to stand next to you. That's it. My mother walks away with class, bro. We'll never beg. I remember one time my father... Got mad at her, she's spending too much money, and she's not like the type to really overdo it. But I don't know what happened, it's not really the point at this point. The bottom line is, he threatened her to take away the credit card. I'm gonna teach you a lesson, you know. My mother did, bro, right away. She opened up the paper, started making calls to go clean houses, bro, like that. What do you think my father did, bro? Gave her another $500 a week. <laughs> That's how my mom does it, bro. She's no joke, bro. She does not play games, or she will not let you have power over her, bro. Just, she's just full trust in God. That's what she said. She said, "You don't want to give me no money. I'm a housewife. I need money for no problem. I love my kids. I'm gonna work. It's not a problem, yo. Like that, yo. Why? Cause she trusted in God, yo. Right away, started making calls. I was like, "Mommy, you're not gonna go clean houses." She said, "Oh yes, I will." Oh yes, I will never let somebody talk to me like that, yo. That's not even an ego thing or a pride thing. That's a self-respect thing. You must have that, yo. Because it's world who will teach us that, yo. They got to let somebody just walk all over his name. Go see what happens when you take God's name in vain, yo. Come on, man. Come on, man. Only death can atone for that, bro. You don't even understand the, the, the levels that we're talking about, bro. The name of God, you write it on a piece of paper and then rip up that paper, your whole soul will get ripped up. I don't even understand, yo. I don't know, I can't speak on that, yo It's very deep, man It's just be respectful when you mention the name of God, yo Remember one time I was in a school A Jewish school Yes, reform, there's no doubt about it I'm not saying no Yo, I wrote God, G-D One of the kids went home Because he wrote on the blackboard God without, you like, uh, lowercase G-O-D So I told him, no, 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 no Aaron, you must write it, capital G-D He's like, why? I was like, because it gives deference and reverence to God's name It's important, you know Like, it's not like Ricky or... Jason or whatever You know you have to put like a dash in the name It's very specific So he went home and told his mother I guess he was excited about it actually Because he was a nice kid The next day I get called into the principal's office Stop proselytizing in this school I said what is going on He said did you tell the kids that they have to write capital G dash D I said absolutely No no that we don't do that over here You don't do what you don't respect God's name over here I don't understand of course she gets mad I remember they made us take a class Yo this is so brain stupid yo this is here, one of the jobs I lost. For this right here, I'm going to show you live, bro. And because I believed in God, bro. That's why, bro. I sure will tell you, yo. So, and I'm happy I could say it, yo. So you can get inspired to believe in God that much, yo. To understand, bro. That at the end of the day, they're not going to disrespect God and get away with it, bro. It's not going to happen. Like, I'm going to let you know, bro. Like, I'm sorry, man. If I have to walk away, I will not quit. No problem. So they made a class that we had to take And the rabbi was a girl <laughs> But they made me take this class You know, I wasn't even religious back then But I knew a little bit Torah Like enough to know Like when somebody's feeding me You know, nonsense So this is a reform school So I'm sitting in the class And like everything she's saying is like wrong So I correct her here I correct her there I give her proof I show her how This, that So one of the girls I guess the secretary Sat in the class I don't know To spy on us Or God only knows Maybe she said Oh this guy's probably Gonna say something So at the end of the class I get called into the office The next day And The principal's like Oh you're you're not running the class I don't know I said nobody's running the class I said the rabbi's cool with it She'll tell you I was right I proved her wrong I said what's the problem She's humble She's accepting it no, 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 you're not going to preach over here. You're not gonna, what do you think? You're going to tell, tell everybody what to do. I said, bro, bro, what are you so allergic to the word of God? I don't understand, yo. She kept going at me like a piranha, bro. Like a, like, yo, psychotic people. I promise you, bro. So I said to her, you know what? 
I went and got the rabbi, yo, and I brought her into the room. And I said, tell this lady, I'm not going to say her name, tell this lady that I wasn't a nuisance to your class, that everything I said was right. I backed it up with proof that me and you are good. So she looked at her and she said, everything he said, basically she said, everything he said, we good. That's true. So she left. This principal lost her. Needless to say, I think within a week I was fired, Joe. You know, and somebody will come up to me, oh, yeah, oh, you see, you got fired because you, you embarrassed her. Yeah. Embarrassed her? All of a sudden, you're worried about her. You're worried about the feelings of a bully. I told you she's a piranha. You're worried about the piranha? Clown. Worry about the piranha. The piranha's gonna attack you. What do you think? Better be careful, bro. This is no joke, bro. Because I talk about wicked people, I talk about them eaten by a piranha. That's how you know the wicked are around. Why? Because it's attached to wicked things. But you don't get it, bro. Evil, 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 yo. We sit down, we talk about the truth, and we debate it, bro. But then when I show you, yo, that the Palestinian Israeli conflict is a horror show because we kiss up to the wicked, they're wicked, they want us dead. And we kiss up to them, yo, to say solution, give them peace, peace process, peace. I'm not even going to say what, yo. <laughs> Kiss up to the wicked You fall in their hands That's it I don't care if you're From the merits party I don't care from what party You are politically in Israel This is what it is bro You understand It's been played out In history over and over again Yo They don't have mercy They're not gonna change You don't get it yo That's it That's what it is Hashem sent them To destroy us Why Not even God forbid To destroy us Thank God not to destroy us Bro you see They shoot 4,000 rockets Three of them land (laughs) Two people get killed God forbid Not even yo Sick man, sick, 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 sick. Why is Trump sends that? Why are all these terrorist attacks in Jerusalem? Why? Because as a nation, we don't do the right thing. That's why. If you ask me, if you were a kid and you raised your hand in my class and said to me, Coach, Coach, can you tell me why God is doing this? I say, because we don't appreciate it. As a nation, yes, me and you appreciate him. We have tears in our eyes when we dive in uh, Shimona Estre and we think about God's mighty might and beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't worry. There's a lot like that. But. Many of the Jews don't appreciate it. And since Kol Yisrael Alamim Zelazel, we're all in the same boat, my brother. So when they get punished, we get punished. And that's why. That's why we have to deal with it. And sometimes you see a good Jew gets punished as a sacrifice. So. But that's, you know, an atonement for his sins and then jumping to a high level in heaven. And that's God only decides who he does that with, you know. But if he chose you, it might look like such a tragedy. But in the end, you jump. First of all, you gain heaven, which you would have never have gotten, and then you jumped up a couple of levels in heaven for eternity. And you weigh that against the seventy-year life that could go right, could go bad, could have tragedies, could not have tragedies. You don't know, but we do know. You know why? Because God told us, when you're good and really good, there will be no tragedies, there will be no famine, there will be no evil dictator. There will be no hurting and suffering and pain. But when you assimilate and congregate with your evil assemblies, disrespecting God, it's one thing you don't believe in Him. Fine. That's your uh, your free will. Do what you want, man. But to disrespect Him, to mock Him, to make fun of Him. Yo, 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 how rude, how arrogant, how smug, and how ungrateful. Gosh, the ingratitude is something like, yo, we're coming up to Pesach like in a week and a couple of days. Why did God destroy Egypt? Because they were ungrateful. Ungrateful to who? To Yosef. They attacked his children. Why? Because they grew, they got nervous. And they wanted to kill them and enslave them. They weren't grateful to the children of Yosef. That's why Hashem destroyed them. So why? Because of gratefulness. Don't lack that, my brother. Show that to God and say it often. Say, I love you, God, and I appreciate all you do for me always. I love you. Just like that, yo. Hashem will appreciate that big time, yo. For all the sins I committed, erase them. For all the good deeds I did, highlight them. May you give me the strength and the power to always have peace and patience in my heart. 
to always try to put me in a situation that's peaceful or Kaddish Baruch Hu. Sometimes I don't deserve it. Maybe for things in the past, yo, I did this, I did that. Maybe I started a fight with somebody because I was, you know, when I was a kid. And now I get it back years later, you know what I'm saying? To see how I react. Yo, it's deep, man. It's deep, very deep. Very deep, yo, but your judgments are just the Kaddish Baruch Hu. I know that, yo. Sometimes they don't look like it, yo. Like you sit there, but then again, put your ego low, let it go, and know that God is running the show. And then right away, you hop right back to reality. And you know that the one who made the galaxy and the universe. I told you, this justice is like a calculator, bro. It's never wrong. All praises to the most high. Always help me to do the right thing in this world. And to always put myself in a position to have mental health and peace in my heart. Always, as long as you're there, I'll have that you know, Protect me from the sins of this world. Protect me from opening my mouth to tell the Jew what his end is going to be. When I get upset if they hurt me really bad, which has happened a few times in my life, you know, the knowledge, the foresight to keep my mouth closed. Not even to say, yo, God is going to deal with you harshly, my brother. Not even that. You know why? Let's see if you know. If you know the answer to this, then I accomplish my mission. Because when you correct the wicked, they're going to hate you. Better don't say that. Nothing and keep it moving, my brother. Like that, yo. Somebody hurts you really bad, yo. Put your ego low, let it go, and know that God is running the show. May my soul be like dust to all. May I be silent to all those who curse me, yo. You understand what we're telling you, bro? Humbleness, bro. That's the magic word. If God came to you and said to you, I'll give you anything right now in the world, what do you want? Asking for humbleness, yo. Wow, wow, wow. Then everything comes with that. The money, all the blessing. What do you think? You're gonna lose from being humble? You're never gonna lose from being like I told this kid motion. Don't brag. Like King Solomon said, let other people brag for you. And even then be careful, because if they brag for you in front of jealous people, that's gonna create more hate. So better not nobody brags about nothing. Humbleness, the ways of the Torah are humble. Because that's what God wants you to do is to trust Him. If you trust Him, you'll be humble. You're not going to yell and scream. You're not going to get mad. You're going to know that God put this person in your life to teach you a lesson, to show you something, to speak to you. Because He can't speak to you from heaven. Because then the test goes bye-bye. You understand? The only way Hashem can conduct Himself in this world by testing you is by hiding Himself. He's concealing himself in this world. Why? To test you. And I love you for that. Because you show me things that are out of nature, you know, that only my brain and my mind can comprehend. My physical body. My finger doesn't have wisdom, bro. My finger has wisdom to move when my mind tells it to move. You understand? That's wisdom. And that's endowed by the greatest, by the most high, the most amazing. Turn a grape into a raisin. Yo. Respect God always. And praise His name always. I love you, Hashem. And may He put Jews in front of me so I can teach Him about your holy and most worthy of ways. The modesty, the humbleness, the respect for all. <laughs> Hold your tongue, my son. That's the letter of the Ramban. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things in there, but the main message is hold your tongue. Don't get angry. Because when you get angry, it's going to destroy you. I told you, the hater destroys the hater. Don't let it destroy you, my brother. I love you, my son. I always love you. And I just want to say thank you for everything you ever did for me. 
the Rasha is going to come. How do you know he's going to do for you? How do I know? Because right now as I'm living, his energy is keeping me alive. That's he's doing for me right now as we speak. Yeah, Rasha, you don't even see it, yo. But I can't even rebuke him. You know why? I can't even what rebuke. Can't even with advice. Nah, don't say that, my brother. <laughs> he's going to get mad at you, bro. Stay 